Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's NADA webinar. My name is Ashley Smith from NADA, and I will be your host. From all of us at the National Automobile Dealers Association, we're happy to have you. Today's webinar will be recorded and available on NADA's website at nada.org slash education. As a quick reminder, NADA Education is an online resource and learning tool available to you and your entire team as a free member benefit. Every one of your staff members can create their own login and access over 500 online resources, including NADA Show 2020 workshop recordings. We have an hour scheduled for this webinar, including Q&A. Please type any questions you have for our presenter into the Q&A panel. You can find this located at the bottom of your screen at any time during the presentation. At the end, we'll ask as many questions as we can in the time allotted. Our topic today is virtual retailing, how to improve CX and drive sales. Our presenter today is Steve DeWitt, Director of Business Development with Automotive Mastermind. Steve, thanks so much for your time and joining us today. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, Ashley. Um, I'm excited to discuss this topic. I think that it's uh, obviously top of mind with a lot of people. So let's go ahead and, and get started. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. So my name is Steve DeRitt. As uh, Ashley said, I am the Director of Business Development for Automotive Mastermind for the Central and West Coast. Prior to coming to work at Automotive Mastermind, I spent 23 years retail automotive, 15 of those years, the last 15, as general sales manager at a couple of Toyota dealerships in the Dallas market. So virtual retailing, where are we now? Following an uptick in COVID-19, dealers around the U.S. are starting to experience a second round of closures or disruptions on their showroom floors, putting the pressure back onto the virtual sales environment. Unlike round one, this is no longer unprecedented. There are major lessons that we've learned in the last six months and so we're going to be discussing what have we learned from that. Dealers got a number of things right during the first round of closures. We quickly saw dealers add tiles and banners to their website. Initially, the tiles and banners talked about COVID-19 safety precautions and how they're going to keep their customers safe as they came back into service drives, since that was the first part of the essential services of a dealer. Then we also saw increased focus on DR and alternative methods of doing business. According to a recent consumer impact study, 88% of dealers are going above and beyond conducting business at their physical location. But there's still work to be done. While sales trends are currently positive, and almost everyone I talk to in the auto industry are seeing really good positive results, no one knows what the rest of 2020 will bring. And currently, only 62% of dealers are satisfied with their current digital retailing solution. Taking control of your digital retailing process allows you to take control of your future success. We've all heard the frustrations around lack of face-to-face -face interaction and the inconveniences involved when it comes to digital retailing. Retailer and manufacturer creativity in response to the pandemic varied by market during the last several months. As dealerships activities shifted from primarily in-person to online during quarantine, the U.S. trailed China by 10% and the U.K. by 9% in offering the consumer the ability to purchase online. With over 40% of U.S. customers surveyed, not having an online option available at almost 20% higher than China, COVID has changed the dealership experience from a number of people needed to complete a transaction and how it relates to non-traditional retail formats. This disruption is an opportunity to re-envision retail formats 
and adopt digitalization and align closer to the consumer's expectations. In the future, retail will continue to see disruption from automotive megatrends in electrification and mobility. Today, we'll discuss the lessons learned from COVID-19 closures and how dealers can bring their digital retail experience up to speed by connecting the online and offline dealership experience, improving the efficiency and efficacy of their customer communication, and delivering the buying experiences that customers now expect. We all quickly learned in March how important the online customer experience was for dealerships. Many of us were left flat-footed. It is still very important today, even now that dealerships have opened their doors. However, we still see connecting these two environments is proving to be a challenge. What we've learned, dealers have gotten better at connecting these experiences. When a customer comes into your showroom, your sales staff and management staff knows exactly where that customer left off in the process when they were there previously. And you wouldn't make them restart the process every time they visited the dealership. As an example, if a customer comes into your showroom today and fills out a complete credit application on your showroom floor on Monday, and then comes back into the showroom to complete the purchase on Tuesday, you wouldn't make them complete another application. The same concept should apply when you look at your digital retailing process. Even for dealers that were already embracing digital retailing before COVID-19, connectivity still remains a challenge. 34% of consumers say they are frustrated with the lack of face-to-face -face interaction. 12% say that um, that more inconvenient and slower to conduct business when you, when you use these platforms. And 11% say that the functionality is still just lacking compared to other digital retailers like Best Buy and things like that. I, I encourage all of you to audit your current process. Recently, I started considering trading my own vehicle for a new vehicle. And like any other customer, I started wondering, what's my current vehicle worth? So um, I sent a couple texts to people that I know still in the industry. And then I went on to a couple of dealership websites and used their online trade appraisal evaluator tool. Some of the tools, I'll tell you, if you haven't looked at your tool recently, some of the tools are way easier for a customer to use than others. Um, some of them are very dynamic, and I experienced this firsthand as I did this process. However, after completing the, the dealer's trade evaluation tools and also the DR tools that were on their website, when I did get phone calls and emails back from sales associates, they didn't even mention my trade-in. And they didn't mention their di digital retailing process by name. Like if there was a tile on their website where they had branded their digital retailing process, when they reached back out, they didn't even mention that process as an example, fair fast, fair, fast, and friendly, or whatever they may call it. I believe this is an opportunity to tie the trade-in back into the process if a trade appraisal has been done on your site and get more information from that consumer. Most dealers need used car inventory right now more than ever, but there's a disconnect between the trade appraisal tool on, on most dealers' website and the sales associates' follow-up. I remember when we looked at our daily in our save a deal meeting at our trade appraisal trade ratio and you know what we traded for, what we looked at the day before. And I wondered as I was doing this process, are dealers looking at every appraisal that happened on their website from the day before in these save a deal meetings and these meetings that happen daily? If not, why 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 have why aren't you, right? I mean you can trade for things at your front door. You don't have to worry about transportation cost and, and, and auction fees and not, not seeing the condition of the car. So really encourage dealers to really look at that process. Some dealerships have a dedicated internet sales team, following up, nurturing customers, providing that white glove experience um, to internet leads is something that has always been critical. 
the BDC is a critical interaction point between the virtual car dealership and a traditional dealership operations, meaning it needs to be connected to not just the showroom but the sales tab, also the marketing, F&I, service, and other critical outreaches. Ensure that your BDC can easily connect all three of these, marketing, F&I, and the service drive. There are digital tools available to help dealers that are facing staffing constraints. You know, I hear from dealers all across my territory that, you know, they're trying to do less, they're trying to do more with less, right? And there's a lot of tools out there that, that enable dealerships to do that. Ensure that the data from your CRM and DMS sales platforms are analyzed and in place. Make sure that all of your sales follow-up emails um, and phone calls mention the customer's trade, the appraisal on the website. Um, also, you know, if you're pushing on your emails in your internet process for in-person visits when a customer may or may not be comfortable with that, it's a, it's a great time to look at the templates that you're using and make sure that they're sensitive to consumer expectations right now. Share relative customer insights with your entire, entire sales team. So as customers reply and give you feedback, have meetings with your staff on a regular basis of the, the pulse of the customer, if you will. Do everything you can to create a seamless DX from online to in-store. Lesson learned number two, our communication isn't as effective as it could be. What we've learned, dealers are great at showing customers what safety precautions they've put in place and keeping customers safe but they need to take their communication and marketing a few steps further. Fewer in-person opportunities means your customer communication and marketing needs to work even harder. I hear from dealers all the time, what they're really looking for is low activity on their side, but high return on the marketing side. And so, you know, really uncover and look at those opportunities. Your customers are changing how they communicate with friends and family and coworkers. They expect the same from you. You can see the stat here on the screen where Zoom activity has increased by 378% year over year. You know, I've recently taught my mother to do FaceTime and different things. You, you have to really think about how can I um, really expedite this digital adoption and how I communicate with my customers, whether it's video messaging, text, or chat. As customers handle more and more aspects of their life online, they're expecting dealerships to follow suit with that process. Example, who, how, and what. Follow up on internet leads is robust, but most dealers aren't mentioned the DR option by name like I mentioned earlier. And they're also, um, in some cases, managers that were even calling me and following up on my trade in weren't even mentioned it. So, I think it's a, a really good time to make sure that everyone in the dealership, I mean, you spend a lot of money branding your DR on your website, your TV commercials, your marketing, every communication with the customer needs to push them back to that tool and be mentioned by name. Even involve the used car manager, right? The person that's got his finger on the pulse of the used car market, he needs to know what used car appraisals were done online yesterday and what cars he needs for his ideal inventory as he's trying to acquire inventory. So really, it's not just one phase of the sales and management, it's the, both departments, new, pre-owned, and service that need to stay involved in this process on these internet leads and these DR leads. Use digital tools to ensure your communication is tailored to each customer and prospect is a way to maximize your impact. Behavior prediction tools like Market IQ that leverage outside big data and analyze customers' data is personalized and offer. Apply digital tools and data from your CRM and DMS. You need to use a sales platform to identify best practices and digital retailing to your prospects. They're looking for personalized information and marketing like they never have, right? Almost every retailer out there has brought up their game when it comes to communicating with consumers during this pandemic. And customers are really being way more dialed in and savvy to what they're looking at and what they're not looking at. So determine when and what format you, you communicate with your prospects 
and how they would likely respond. So ask your customers more than ever, you know, ask for their permission and ask how they would like for the communication to happen. One big mistake many dealers are still using is, um, and I mentioned it a minute ago, but using outdated templates. I noticed as I was appraising my car online, some of the responses I, I got were, hey, when can you come in, right? Now, when I was on the retail side, we constantly are trying to sell that appointment over the phone and over email. I mean, that's really what we're trying to do, not sell the car. But I noticed that the emails that the sales associates and managers were sending me and the voicemails that they left on my phone were all asking me, hey, when can you come by? Instead of, are you comfortable with coming by? And then also um, the hours, you know, informing me if they have reduced hours in case the website hours do not match, really making sure that I'm aware as a consumer of, you know, what the process looks like and also what the hours are. Dealers aren't making the most of their available technology. People still buy cars from people they like and trust. And without having that human connection, it's harder than it ever has. So look, as I said earlier, look at video to connect. Um, if you're in a video and you're sending a video message to your, your customers and you have your mask on, and that just shows a level of sensitivity. Um, but if you don't have a lot of staff to do phone calls, you know, leverage, like I said earlier, texting and chat and automated updates. You know, there's a lot of platforms out there that use bots and different things to stay engaged with customers. Really look at opportunities where you can, you can do that. So why stop at the sales department? I was in getting service on my wife's car the other day, and I noticed um, an advisor going around a consumer's car with his phone, and he was sending them updates that, hey, your car's ready. I've ran it through the car wash. I mean, service is already starting to embrace this distance and this um, pandemic the way that, that, you know, hopefully sales departments and F&I do as well. I know I, I talked to a lot of dealers where their F&I departments are now doing menu presentations through video, um, you know, making it even easier to do that, that online purchase, if you will. And so it's a great opportunity to use real-time video to make that human connection that everyone's looking for, but also um, make sure that you're as transparent as you can be with your consumers. As customers have conducted increased online purchases at a higher rate than ever before, their expectation has changed as well. So I want to talk a little bit about buying expectation and what customers are now looking for when it comes to the, the purchase process. You know, everything from grocery delivery to curbside pickup, pickups have changed consumer expectations. This is a great time to enforce your brand promise, include your digital retailing by, by name, and what customers are expecting now are online options, home delivery, real-time video, walk-arounds, virtual tours of the dealership, flexible scheduling. I know a lot of employers have allowed employees to have flexible hours at home because of childcare and those kind of things. I mean, really be flexible when you engage with customers on scheduling these appointments and, and, and having conversations with them because some of them are dealing with, you know, online school and things that they're not used to dealing with as well. So the flexibility in scheduling of appointments and also being as transparent that you can be are very important. What we've learned, dealers are starting to embrace new tactics and processes like delivering a vehicle to a customer's home for test drives. New customer behaviors have started being built as well. However, Many see these measures as temporary or don't go as far as they'd like to for the customer delivery CX that today's buyers are looking for. As a business, is, as car business adopts DR and we continue to grow these numbers, this is not something that's going to go away, right? Expectation is changing. The way consumers interact with retailers and goods are changing. So this is not, hey, let's do this for a while, right, because we have to. This is something that you have to embrace these new tactics and keep going and growing with those because those are, are ways to, you know, as the showroom foot traffic comes back, you can't take your eye off the ball in digital retailing. You need to just build upon it.
upper level management and dealership leaders have an opportunity to assure their customer base that they're keeping them safe. And now is not the time for upper, upper level management and ownership to step away and be hands off. This is not a set it and forget it. This is something where everyone at the dealership all the way up to the executive should be front and center letting the, the customer base know that, hey, we're here to protect you, we're here to serve you. And as they adapt to this digital retailing environment, this is not something that goes away. This is something where you want the customer's feedback on what they like and dislike so that you can evolve your process to really keep it moving forward even as showrooms open back up. Look for opportunities in your sales process. What does the management intervention piece look like in your lead follow-up? Use this as an opportunity to engage with customers before they come in, right? Have your sales managers and service advisors engage with customers quicker, like earlier intervention. Once the appointment is set, make sure the customer knows what to expect when they get to the dealership. Is a mask required? I've been in dealerships where they're not wearing masks, right? Because in their county, it's not something that's required. What is the timeline and how is the dealership enabling social distance, right? What does that look like? Make sure your, your, your customers know what that looks like as well. Will their car be clean and sanitized before they arrive? You know, make sure you're letting them know about that. During video emails and video walkarounds, you know, wear that mask if, you're, if your team's wearing that. Share steps that the dealer's already taken to keep them safe, but also explain all the different delivery options and ways to do paperwork that are available for the consumer. Go beyond what is now common and offer things like e-signing, remote test drives, engage with these customers in a level that we've never done before in the, in the car business. And utilize data-driven marketing, right? We talked earlier about how delivering that customer experience is more important than it's ever been. And with re reduced staff, that's hard, right? You don't, you, you can't find something that's gonna be high activity, low results. You need something that's lower activity, high results. So identify and prioritize your highest quality sales leads, new and used. And as you get these digital retailing leads and trade appraisals, really identify and prioritize those. Send them personalized marketing campaigns that build off of the messaging that the consumer is looking for. Data-driven talking points can help maximize customer engagement, whether it's online or in person. Most of you already know this by now, but if you're holding off on improving your virtual retailing process, now is the time to commit. By the end of this year, you're going to see 80 to 90% of U.S. new car dealers with a full e-commerce capability. While we don't know what the remainder of 2020 will hold, it's still anyone's guess. Dealers are presented with the opportunity to take control of their future by learning from the past. Ensure your dealership is nimble and ready to be the best e-commerce experience that they can be, to sell cars no matter what the future holds. Connect that offline and online experience. Improve the efficiency and efficacy of the consumer outreach that you're currently doing. Deliver the buying experience that customers have come to expect in 2020. So now we'll open it up for questions. Fantastic. Thank you so much. That was such an informative presentation. Really appreciate your time. Um, <clears throat> we do have time for questions, as you mentioned. So if you would like a question asked on your behalf, please type it into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. And while we wait for questions to come in, we are going to put a few poll questions on the screen, and we'd really appreciate your feedback via the polls of today's webinar. All right, so while we wait for questions to come in, I have the first one here. Um, what is one thing that a dealer could do to make sure that they're connecting their online and offline sales process? 
you know, at, at first glance, I think my best practice there would be, you know, establish a digital retailing checklist, almost like you would with a deal jacket um, in F&I or a, a, a deal folder where you would have a checkbox for everything that needs to go in that folder. I think as you look at your sales process for digital retailing, as a best practice, I would almost have for every current digital retailing deal that I was working, I would have a deal jacket or some form of folder for each one of those consumers, and I would have a checklist of what has already taken place and what hasn't. That way, when they do show up at the dealership, you know exactly what they've already done in the process. I mentioned early on in the presentation, you wouldn't have a customer redo a credit app every time they walk in the dealership. So having, if you could imagine as a customer walking in the door of a dealership and me saying, hey, Sam, I'm so glad you're here. I've got your folder right here. We've already did this, 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 and this. This is where we're at. Let's finish this up. That customer is going to be blown away with that process, and it's going to really make them feel like they're at the right place to buy the vehicle. Fantastic. Thank you. Next question is, with used car inventory being so hard to acquire, what is digital retailing, uh, what is a digital retailing best practice to help dealers uh, acquire this inventory? You know, I would say a couple things. First, I would say, you know, I, I wonder how long it's been since dealerships have looked at how they're hitting their trades on the website. Like, if they if they've got KBB on their side or Black Book or whatever they have on their website, when was the last time a dealership looked to see what the settings were, like what percentage of, you know, clean or average or however they're hitting those cars? And as, as dealerships have had a harder time getting used car inventory, have you went in and tweaked that setting, right? And is it something where, you know, it's aggressive, it's not aggressive? But I, I think um, that's one way. The other way would be, you know, make sure that your internet department and digital retailing department have a list of vehicles that is your core used car inventory that your used car buyers are already looking for and trying to buy. I was in a dealership the other day where the guy told me, he said, hey, I, I bought a truckload. It cost me a lot of money to get here. And then when I went and walked the cars, I just wasn't happy about them. So everyone knows the value of trading for cars at your front door. So I think making sure that your website is helping you hit cars at the right dollar amount that's going to engage that customer and help you trade for the car, that is huge. But the other thing would be make sure everyone knows what cars you're looking for, right? Because there is a disconnect still between the sales associate or internet sales manager and the used car department in a lot of cases. And so we got to tie those together. All right. Okay, um, another question that came through is how dealers, um, how can dealers continue to learn and grow uh, from these uncertain times? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I mentioned it a couple times, but I think that a lot of dealerships that I've ran in the past and that I've been part of, we had a save-a-deal meeting every day. And then normally on Fridays, we'd have a, you know, contracts and transit or asset meeting or something like that. I think if you're not talking in those meetings about, hey, where, where did we miss? Where did we hit it out of the park? How can we continue to evolve this digital retailing process? We saw the staff there from the NADA chairman saying that 80 to 90% of U.S. new car dealers are going to have a very robust and full e-commerce department. If you're not having those conversations and trying to learn from the past to make sure that you've evolved your process to make it even bigger, better, stronger, then I think you're kind of missing out, right? So, and those aren't the, always the easiest conversations because people, you know, no one wants to come underneath the magnifying glass, but I think the, the best for the dealership would be for you to have those ongoing conversations and what's working, what's not working, and, you know, what sources are the best sources and, you know, which sources should we maybe eliminate? So that, that would be my thought on to really continue to help that evolve. And ask your customers, right? The customers, maybe do like a poll to your customers or, or an exit survey as they leave the dealership. Ask them, hey, how could we improve this process that you came through today? It could be a quick, you know, exit interview at the F&I manager or the delivery manager. But I think if you're not doing some of those steps, you could be potentially missing out. 
All right. Again, if you have a question you'd like asked on your behalf, please type it into the Q&A um, pod at the bottom of your screen. Um, at this time, I have about one more question that's come through for you. So do you know what percentage of new car franchise dealers cannot sell a new car 100% online because state laws don't allow? Is your 80 plus percent number just for used auto sales? The the 80 to 90 percent number that we that we mentioned there at the very end from the NADA chairman was that was based 80 to 90 percent of the dealers that are allowed to do a complete online purchase. Um, I know even in some states there's there's still signatures and stuff that have to be real ink and not digital. So it, it does vary from state to state. Um, but I, I still think everyone would agree that there's growth opportunity, whether your state is, you know, a full where you can do the whole thing online or if your retailer allows you to do the whole thing online, there's still so much room for growth and opportunity um, that I, I think he's pretty pretty close to target because, you know, as, as, as dealerships open back up and the profitability is where it is, um, there is an opportunity to slide back into our old ways and we can't do that, right? We have to stay focused on this and have this as part of our business moving forward because that's what consumers' expectations are showing. All right. And I had one last question come through. Um, what is the most successful method of speaking with prospects via email or phone to assure them they are getting the best vehicle and sales experience during these difficult times? You know, I think it, it varies from state to state, but I think, you know, in some cases, I, I don't know about everyone else on this call, but I text way more than I probably, you know, talk um, when it comes to phone calls and that kind of thing. So I think text in general is still a very, um, with a consumer's permission is a great way to communicate with them. But I think you should ask them, you know, hey, how would you like for me to follow up, right? And then if they answer that and say, hey, I'd only want email or I only want a phone call, you know, live live by it, right? If you've asked them how to do it, um, you know, if, you, if you've said, hey, how do you want me to communicate? And they say, hey, I want it by text only. Well, don't call them then, right? Because you've asked, you've asked them how they want to communicate. Now, um, you know, so, so that's just one way to do it. But I think, I don't know about everyone else, but I text and chat way more than anything. So I think that's something to embrace. And, you know, a lot of times you can do that through your, your CRM or whatever. All right. Well, that is all of the questions that have been submitted. Um, so before I close it out, Steve, any last words or comments from you? No, I just uh, thank you all for your time. I'm very humbled uh, to be able to present this. And um, I just really appreciate it. And hopefully, hopefully I added some value to your day. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. We really do appreciate it. Of course, if you come up with any additional questions once the webinar has concluded, we, of course, invite you to connect with our presenter. His email address is on the screen now. Um, and just as a quick reminder, this webinar, along with other resources, are available to you and your entire team at nada.org slash education. On behalf of NADA and Automotive Mastermind, thank you all for joining us. Have a great day.